Winning his first Alano Polo while driving for FPO, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., car 99. Julian Asso on the outside of the front row, and Kevin Dwyer starts in the top five there in car 72. He uh, was actually very quick in most of the practice sessions. We should keep an eye out for him. The major news item heading into this race is that the, uh, the Las Vegas Auto Ring, which the series opened uh, the season after the past uh, two years, has uh, apparently going to close because even the ASCC can't find a use for it unless uh, they get an NFL game there. And if there's anything worse than the ASCC, it's the NFL. And, uh, well, I really can't say too much more about that because uh, there's not much more to make fun of, really. Uh, the qualifying session for this race was very, very interesting. It was interrupted by several red flags. Uh, and as a result, the grid is a little bit more shuffled up than we would uh, normally expect. Davina Hanson, car 11, brought out one of those red flags. Uh, she had an engine failure, a rather big engine failure, and so did Yev uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov in uh, car number 8. So, uh, with that being said, uh, uh, Alessandro Rossini, Bobby Dollar, Benoit Vukla, uh, Mariana Zavala, and Cade Taylor all came very close, actually, to not making the 110% cut. The only car that did, no surprise, Dalton Johnson. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. And we see Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. leading the field to the green. And he's got Yulina Soba alongside him. He's got Kevin Dwyer and Melanie Klevno behind him. Coming into turn one here at Road America, Quiggles Jr. gets the jump, and he uh, plays the game of chicken with Nasova, and he's going to win that game. But we got contact. We got Ian Cooper, Greg Woodard, and it looks like Adrian Devereaux involved. Woodard slides that car around, but first corner contact. Nasova makes a bid for the lead. We'll have a look at that in just a second here. As Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car is trying to make a bid. Uh, no, he's, is he going to look around Quiggles Jr.? Not quite yet. It's going to be a bold move. He tries. Quiggles Jr. clears Nasova. Kevin Dwyer sweeps through into second place. Matthias Taub in the, in the uh, yellow Myasoft 10 car coming up into third. And Adrian Devereaux in car number one is trying to sneak through as well. As Kevin Dwyer jumps up to second. Now we're looking at uh, the first corner. Here's Ian Cooper. And uh, it's the last time we'll see this paint job run. He slides up into Adrian Devereaux, roughs him up. And uh, Greg Woodard sends all three of uh, sends him and Woodard around. Um, looked like Woodard ran turn one a little bit wide. And Adrian Devereaux did have a nose in there. And Ian Cooper was clearly alongside. So I think that's just an unfortunate racing deal. But um, is he's... What? Okay. Um... We got another look at that coming up, but Ian Cooper, that, that car is already pretty destroyed, and he's he's letting everyone through. Here we got another look at it. Okay, Woodard sl is sliding it around. There's enough room to get three cars in there successfully. Woodard runs it wide. Devereaux's already there. By Devereaux's already committed there, and then Ian Cooper slides up. That's a little hard to call that one, really. Greg Woodard in the 41 car did a good job not collecting the rest of the field, though. Good job at recovering that 41 car, but, uh, uh, what? Well, anyways, um, Adrian Devereaux to the steward's office after the end of the race, even though I think he had enough space to poke his nose in there. Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car, though, is continuing to be very aggressive. He seizes an opportunity when Kevin Dwyer moves into the lead in the carousel around Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. and Dwyer to the P1. The Michelin Sun 72 car has not been very strong all year long. He's had several problems getting that car to his liking, but he is on wings this weekend, and now he's leading at the end of the first, uh, 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 coming into Canada Corner on the first lap, and uh, from the second row in the Juno, a car which is running detuned engines just to make them last the whole race. And here is um, Matthias Taub in the 10 car. He's battling with Adrian Devereaux and Michael Sykes. Sykes nearly won this race last year. Now they're stuck behind the cats of Nasova. Nasova doing a pretty good job at holding them off so far. Devereaux on the inside of Taub, though. Adrian Devereaux sticks his nose in there, and he doesn't quite have Taub cleared. Coming now towards Station 5 as they come under the bridge. As uh, now Taub, he's got Michael Sykes directly behind him. Is the Welshman going to peek out? The Red 5 is sort of a big warning light in uh, Taub's mirror because Sykes will be very, very brave when he needs to as Nasova goes wide and off the course. And um, Taub, Dever oh, and we got another spinner in the back, it looks like. And that looks like that was Christian Hans in the 14 car. Breaks a little too late, off he goes. He's running up in 16th place. He's uh, 
He, he's been very, very unlucky during his time with Volpe, even though he has been quicker than both Roderick and Carroll most of the weekend. Bobby Dollar is making his series debut in the 44 car for Black Diamond Racing. He's a multiple-time GT champion, and these days he's a regular in TM Lights. Uh, he's running back in 39th. He's uh, not exactly had a whole lot of uh, a lot of clear t uh, track time. A lot of yellow flags and red flags I mentioned in qualifying really hampered him, and uh, that's why he starts as, he started as far back as he did. But he's run here several times before. Jose Luis Martinez in the zero car battling here at the three two Tinos. Alessandro Rossini in the forty two car. Benoit Vukler in the forty eight, and Ben Atkins in that white and red fifty car. Atkins in the fifty car uh, being a bit of a putting up a fight against Martinez. This is the same team that won the Independence Trophy last year. And here's Benoit Vukler. We didn't expect to see him uh, come back with Tutino, but here he is. He'll be uh, back with a different team. Oh, he's coming into the pit lane. Benoit Vukler hits the pit lane. I wonder if Tutino's rolling the dice here on strategy. That'd be very interesting if they did that. We'll have to see how that turns out for him. But I think that was for a puncture or something, is that they didn't look ready for him into the pits. In the pit lane, rather. Kevin Dwyer is still leading, and he's actually pulling away from the rest of the field. So, um, the Schaefer Sapphire car leads with Kevin Dwyer at the wheel. Uh, here is Michael Sykes doing battle with Adrian Devereaux. As now they come barreling into turn one. Devereaux gives Sykes a little bit of room. Uh, gets Goes off himself, but Sykes, he's got the edge. The red five is definitely on its way forwards. As the Welshman tries to clear Devereaux, does he have him? Not quite. Devereaux's got to run. We got side by side here around here at Road America. And Melanie Klevno's coming into the mix in the 12 car. In that, uh, in that sort of gray and blue car back there. Taub around the outside of Quiggles Jr. in Station 5. Matthias Taub, the Swede, moves to second. And when we get behind him, we've got uh, Sykes coming through. But Quiggles Jr. fighting back in that white car. Car 99, no sponsor in that car this race. The Corhill deal ended uh, after Quincy. And uh, Melanie Klevno in car number 12 beginning to make some headway. Arto Kakinen in the silver and blue 9 car beginning to make his uh, presence felt, along with Packer Carroll in that Cyan car back there, and Leonid Roderick in the, in the other Volpe back there. So the Volpe's beginning to make this interesting as Quiggle starts sliding backwards. Melanie Klevno, car number 12, has clearly had the edge over Davina Henton for most of the weekend. Luciano Savarol, car number 3, is running back in 12th. He nearly won this race a couple of years ago. Battling with Julian Asova, he hasn't had the most luck this year. The speed is still there from last year that carried him, uh, well, almost to the championship last year. Savarol trying to get around Nasova and negate the disadvantage after qualifying, but Nasova slides it wide. I don't think Savarol expected that, he, and you can tell by his reaction there. But Savarol now around the outside of the seven car, but not quite, doesn't quite have Nasova cleared. Squeezing her over a little bit, Luciano. He's uh, being a bit forceful with this pass, but he's finally got her. And now, Kevin Dwyer is still leading in the 72 car. What a brilliant start from the Minnesotan as he leads here at Road America. This is the closest he's going to get to a home race, I think, in the foreseeable future. And he's making the most of it. Kevin Dwyer, car 72. He has been putting on a show most of the weekend, putting this Juno places it should not be, including fourth on the grid, and now the lead of the race. He's got Matthias Taub and a lot of way faster cars behind him, but he is hanging on for all he's worth. Coming, uh, now we got Leonid Roderick here in car number four, getting around Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Oh, Packer Carroll must have slid it wide, and he's going to get around his teammate. So the two Aperture Science Volpes, the two, uh, the two main cars, getting to make their mark on, the, on this race, it looks like, but they got a little bit of work to do uh, to catch up to Matthias Taub and Kevin Dwyer. Taub is really beginning to reel Dwyer in now. He makes a move. Coming on the inside, Kevin Dwyer tries shutting the door, but Taub goes a little bit late in the brakes. Taub squeezes Dwyer out wide. Kevin Dwyer dives it in. Taub, is Taub going to be able to clear Kevin Dwyer? I don't think so. Not yet. Kevin Dwyer is going to hang on. Uh, I think Matthias Taub is going to be very, very frustrated, but Dwyer runs it wide. Coming into the carousel, and they're starting to stack up a little bit behind him. As here comes Michael Sykes in the red five. Dwyer trying to hang on as Taub slides under him in the carousel. Does he have him cleared? I think he does. Matthias Taub makes the move in the carousel. Kevin Dwyer back to second, but Dwyer shuts the door on Michael Sykes. Uh, in the, right in the kink though, that was a little dangerous, but Dwyer, uh, Kevin Dwyer, the 72 car, trying to hang on to this position as Sykes goes backwards, and now Adrian Devereaux to third. 
So, we I mean, this is great stuff already, as uh, Kevin Dwyer is uh, making a hero of himself in the opening laps by dicing with the regular front runners. Matthias Taub, I think, is loving the fact that uh, the 72 is right behind him because it's clear sailing out front. And uh, I think Tao must be anticipating that DeWire is going to continue to hold everyone up, but Adrian Devereaux has other ideas in that, in that sort of killer shark. That's what uh, some people have called this car uh, due to its coloring and the nose on that car. And uh, Adrian Devereaux to P2 in the Haas manufacturing car. Some rumors that Haas manufacturing may actually be leaving this team at the end of the season. I don't know why, but where those rumors are coming from, but we'll have to see what becomes of that. So uh, there could be a new primary sponsor on the hottest Walter car. Here's Kevin Dwyer now. Oh, he's hanging on to third. You can see that Kevin Dwyer's defensive driving has really uh, caused Michael Sykes and Arto Kekin, but they're going to try to split him three wide in Station 5. Oh, I don't know how they got that. They didn't pull that off without running into each other, but they did. And there they go, right around him on either side. Kevin Dwyer really couldn't do anything about that. Colombian Carlos Roqueta is making his series debut. He's the only Colombian running in the TM Mexico series, and he was leading the points until last week. Cameron Taylor, uh, who was driving this who was driving this car for the last two races, is back driving for Team Timothy. Uh, Roqueta is actually driving for an, aff an affiliate team to Manicor Engineering in the TM Mexico series. So let's we'll see if uh, Manicor places him in this car for future races. He's not scheduled to run at uh, Indianapolis. He has um, other commitments. And that's rather unfortunate because he's had a pretty strong debut. Here's Cameron Taylor in the Sierra car. The uh, or new red Sierra sponsored car. Uh, good to see we have some new uh, sponsors making their way into the series. It's uh, now a ruby red car. Uh, they also sponsor uh, the Team Timothy Team Lights car. So it's good to see the Team Timothy seems to have found themselves a regular sponsor of some sort. Says Cameron Taylor. Oh, almost into the side of Kurt Pliskin and Ben Atkins off in the background. So, uh, Ben Atkins doing a bit of rally cross there. As Cameron Taylor, whoa, Cameron Taylor, that car is not handling well. Roderick has now entered the picture, challenging Kevin Dwyer at the battle at the front of the field here. Uh, looks like all the defensive driving Dwyer did sort of stacked everyone up, and that's, I think, why Roderick is uh, challenging him at the moment. Melanie Klebno in the 12 car could be uh, following, through, uh, following suit as Klebno gets a good run off the last corner. And Roderick now takes a dive. Here is Melanie Klebno, who's... We're going to try to take advantage of Roderick gets of a Roderick's pass on Dwyer. Cleveno looks like she's going to do that. Packer Carroll in the two car looks like he could be uh, in the frame as well. Cleveno in the Gessler powered Lynx L313 comes right on by. But Kevin Dwyer, I don't think he's done fighting. She slides back in line behind the 12 car. And uh, Dwyer looks like he's going to, he's going to, he's not going to hesitate to pounce. Uh, Kevin Dwyer doesn't exactly get along well with this man, Packer Carroll who has uh, reportedly been told to either pick up the pace uh, or lose his drive for 2014. He's doing a solid job of uh, picking up the pace. This is actually the best we've seen of Packer Carroll. Granted, we didn't see much of him at Quincy because he got taken out in lap 13, but that looked like a pretty promising weekend for, there, for him uh, there as well. So uh, I'd say he's definitely picked it up. Uh, Chris Davenport and Scott Stoidler, the two, uh, two of the three alert cars, are both having awful runs so far. Both of them have been off the course. Davenport in the sixth car nearly stuffed it into a wall uh, in, uh, already, and he did so multiple times in practice. Uh, not exactly covering himself with a lot of glory after his maiden Master Cup Series win. He's covered himself with more gravel than glory so far here at Road America, and Scott Stoidler has done likewise. And uh, looking back here at Marty Stoiler in the 54. Oh, oh, speaking of covering yourself with more gravel than glory, I'd say that's what Marty Stoiler just did. Although, to be fair, that's the first time he's been in that in a gravel pit all weekend. Uh, so here we have Packer Carroll getting by Kevin Dwyer, or yeah, it looks like he's going to get he's going to clear the 72 car. But you can see how much ground that cost him. And I don't think Packer Carroll is all that happy with Kevin Dwyer racing him as hard as he did. Uh, I don't, and uh, because you can see all the ground he lost to Cleve now in the in the Lynx car. Uh, so Packer Carroll has gone backwards. The other Lynx car, Davina Henton. Uh, started back in 29th, she's up to 17th, and uh, this is the kind of drive that uh, uh, that can win you a championship, being able to make a lot out of nothing. Alexis Rainsford did something similar here uh, a couple of years ago when she started way, way back, almost on like the last four spots on the grid, and almost wound up on the podium, so uh, Davina Henton clearly uh, doing a good job here today. 
Although Tenzin really hasn't had a whole lot of pace uh, this week, and uh, really, it's uh, uh, the Lynx cars have uh, more mostly been. Uh, uh, well, Melanie Cleveland is making them look a little faster than, the, than they really are, it seems, this weekend, because Henton, we haven't seen much from her so far. As Troy Adams in the 18 car is, uh, trying, to und is trying to make a hero out of himself here, going on the inside of Carlos Raquetta. Bit, uh, bit of a bonsai move there. He's got Gasper D'Souza in the double zero right there. D'Souza, uh, let's see, D'Souza capitalizes and gets by. No, D'Souza slides it wide a bit as well. Troy Adams goes right on by Raquetta. But let's see if no, Columbia doesn't have anything to fight back. And Packer Carroll coming alongside Melanie Klebno. Looks like he's finally caught up to the uh, much slower Lynx car. Uh, they The Lynx cars not as fast here as they were at Cariala. And uh, Packer Carroll goes right on by. Oh, here comes Kevin Dwyer now. Dwyer in the 72 going to try to challenge Klebno. Uh, anyways, like Kevin Dwyer here, uh, uh, Melanie Klebno's ability as a driver is uh, the only reason the Lynx cars are even running where they are. Davina Henson in the 11 car has had several problems throughout the weekend, and uh, even so, Melanie Klebno has just genuinely been the faster of the two. But she's trying to hold off Kevin Dwyer, who is clearly the star of the weekend so far. Uh, Kevin Dwyer is sliding in alongside Klebno. Doesn't quite ever cleared. Oh, uh, he's giving it everything he's got. Oh, Klebno gets it a bit loose, and so does uh, Kevin Dwyer. So Klebno holds him off. And we got a battle for the lead now erupting between Adrian Devereux and Matthias Taub. The Frenchman is going to come into the lead right now, but uh, let's see what Taub has to say about that. Devereux cleared Taub fairly easily there. Both men are uh, in the hunt for the championship and have been all season long. Taub has yet to score a win, and his drive is on the line. So he, ha so he is definitely giving it 110%. Michael Sykes in the red five, sort of lurking there in fourth. This Roderick slides it a bit wide in the carousel, keeps it on the gray stuff. As uh, the silver nine car of Arto Kekkonen has moved up into third, Sykesy is just sort of, um, we'll have to see what becomes of that battle here. As Melanie Klebno and Kevin Dwyer, they're both being called into the pits. Uh, that's a little early, I think. Why are they being called in this early? Seems a bit, uh, seems a little bit, um, uh, well, it seems like... Uh, like a really stupid move to pit this early, because uh, you're gonna be because uh, you're gonna be wasting all that time. You could get a low fuel run in, but uh, this is Road America. You don't really want to gamble on fuel here. DK is coming in. Quiggles Jr. is in. Roquetta is in. Frank Azure. The Vernstrom with uh, Friedrich Jaeger is. Kurt Pliskin's in. Why is he pitting? The Reds looks like the leaders no took note of this and are all pitting on lap nine. Uh, looks like they had all intended to pit a lap later than this, but uh, a lot of reactionary uh, pit strategy uh, being done here. So uh, I guess that early, some people pitting early forced to the hand of everyone else. Either that or the teams know something that I don't, especially about fuel mileage here. Though I think that there's some people that could go a lap later than this. Troy Adams in car number 18, uh, well, he's going to be one of the first retirees, to me, the first retiree from the race as a gearbox problem is going to eliminate car number 18. Very disappointing for Troy Adams. Had a pretty good start as Adrian Devereaux beats Matthias Taub out of the pit lane. Arto Kekkonen in the nine car gains a little bit of ground, but great stop by the Hodges Walter crew. And we haven't said that very often, but they've gotten Adrian Devereaux out to a pretty solid lead right now. Quiggles Jr. in the 99 car is going backwards in a hurry. Uh, that was, they didn't have a very good pit stop there in the 99 camp. Damn it. Oh, he's getting a bit too late. Oh, he spins around in Station 5, and he's going to go make sandcastles uh, behind the tire barrier, it looks like. Chris Davenport, on the uh, while most of the rest of the field was making their pit stops, Chris Davenport spun off the course and lost two laps uh, during the, during that pit cycle. He's right stationed in between Narto Kekkonen and his teammate Michael Sykes, and uh, Chris Davenport in that six car is uh, let's see what he's going to try to do. Looks like Davenport is actually going to be a bit of a teammate here because it looks like he's making a charge to see if he can't uh, uh, try to put some pressure on Arto Kekkonen here. Luciano Savarol, in the meantime, is carving his way forward. He's, oh, little ambitious there. And Melanie Klebno backs out of that one very wisely. And here you see Davenport's putting the pressure on Arto Kekkonen. You do wonder, was this an order from the pit box? Or is Davenport just, uh, well, getting a little bored? Because uh, Chris Davenport did say uh, earlier in the weekend that uh, that uh, sometimes when you're a multiple laps down, you need somebody to race, even if you're not supposed to be doing that or not. 
Uh, that's a comment that didn't exactly earn him a whole lot of praise from some of his fellow competitors. But uh, and he's he's putting his money where his mouth is because he's he's actually trying to race Arto Kakinen. But granted, all of that and they go and lap Ian Cooper there who uh, stays out of the way, very very professionally. And uh, you, uh, Chris Davenport is uh, by racing Arto Kakinen, he's actually helping Michael Sykes close the gap. So whoa, Davenport a bit wide. Guess all that pushing made him uh, perhaps burn his tires off a little bit more, so I expect we'll see him in another gravel pit in about five minutes. And here is Peter Short in car 22. The four-time world champion has been having a pretty solid run through, through the field today. He's, oh, no! He got hooked by Kuznetsov! That was Kuznetsov and the cats have right in the kink. That, Kuznetsov just turned hard right into him and just took Peter Short out. Now, I don't know what that was all about, but that was an insane maneuver from Kuznetsov in the eight car. Peter Short got a little bit loose, but Kuznetsov turned down into him, hooked him, and that's in the kink. The most that's definitely deserves a time penalty there. And we got another retiree. Looks like that's Cade Taylor in the 56 car. They haven't had a, they haven't had a pretty good weekend either. They've really been struggling, and uh, frankly, this is just putting the cap on a disappointing weekend for that car. And uh, Kuznetsov, yes, investigate that after the race. I think uh, we could be seeing Kuznetsov with a penalty coming in Indianapolis. Oh no, Roketa's out. Carlos Roqueta out from 17th after a very impressive debut weekend, running, putting the Manicor in places that it probably shouldn't be, running in, the, running solidly in the points, and he goes out. The Colombian definitely turns some heads. Uh, I'm not sure when the next time we'll see him in a Master Cup car is, but he definitely, he definitely uh, impressed today. Giovanni Rota is running in the points, trying to lap a car much faster than the one he's driving which is a bit of an interesting scenario. As Julian Silva pitched it sideways, um, the Italian will be running uh, in Indianapolis, but he'll be running with uh, the with Altalia, with Benoit Vukler as a teammate. They attempted the Carriola Grand Prix, but only Vukler made it into the race. Giovanni Rota has done a very good job here at Road America. He did a pretty good job at Quincy, but he was one of the many cars eliminated on lap 13. As uh, we'll have to see what Rota is able to do as this race goes on. Uh, Frank Azure is running in 16th, and uh, nothing bad has happened to him yet, because uh, this team over in the Arla, they, they, this team runs in Arla, and they've had uh, just about as much bad luck over there as they've had here. So uh, really, I'm surprised nothing is broken in that car. The world must be spinning off its axis or something. Anyways, uh, here is car number 11, Davina Henton, holding off Marty Stoidler in the 54, but Stoidler's a lap down. I think he's been off the track. And Henton has been complaining that he has been uh, putting some pressure on her. Henton's up to 13th, though, and is having a pretty solid run. As Chris Davenport in the sixth car, uh, the team is calling him into the pit lane. So, we'll have to see. Yep, Chris Davenport, car number six, into the pit lane. And here is Kevin Dwyer in car number 72. As he puts a challenge on Luciano Savarol. Dwyer, hot in the brakes. Oh, is he going to... No, not quite. Luciano Savarol saw him coming and set himself up to defend against that very well on the exit. But Lewis Kingston... And the 17 car coming into, into the frame. Lewis Kingston having more success than his sponsor right now as he's had good, sticks his nose on the inside of Kevin Dwyer. And coming down, he's got a great run on Dwyer coming into the first couple of corners. Kingston going to make a move on him down here in, in three. Oh, Dwyer slides it wide and he, Lewis Kingston gets the spot. The Eicholtz team, car number 31, Jacob Eicholtz is running up in 15th. He's trying to hunt down the Portuguese sensation Gaspar D'Souza. But uh, Eichel's having a pretty good run here. He could take the Independence Trophy lead if he has a good finish here. Giovanni Rota. Oh! Rota into the back of Davenport. Well, why did that happen? Uh, that seems a bit of a mindless collision there. But Giovanni Rota just punted Davenport really for no reason that I can fathom. Davenport was, uh, Davenport just coming out of the pits. as we on board with David Gregorian. And Rota just turned right into him. I, that's a, that's a... That's just mindless. Yeah. But Davenport got a penalty for that. I don't see why. Not like it's going to do him any good. Or hurt him, rather. He's not gaining or losing anything. He's already far back enough as the leaders are lapping uh, Gino Kuznetsov, who actually used his mirrors for a change. Uh, he's not exactly one of the nicer back markers out there, to be fair. But uh, we'll have to see what... Uh, here's Arto Kekkonen now. Is Kekkonen now... Uh, whoa! Kuznetsov wide. And, uh, yeah, I don't think he's aware of the blue flags at all or the leaders uh, that are lapping him because uh, right now it's beginning to look like he reverted to his pre-Karyala antics of getting in the way 
And, oh, cutting off, cut, cut off Arto Kakin. I don't think Kakin is going to like that a little bit at one bit. I don't think Arto may have wanted to challenge him there because I think the team may have told him what Kuznetsov just did at that same part of the track. But uh, Kuznetsov really, really needs some discipline to be thrown at him because this is probably the worst race I've seen him drive as Michael Sykes comes in three wide and gets by Arto Kakinen. Kakinen trying to fight back. Uh, trying to fight back. It looks like he might do so. Kakinen holds off Michael Sykes despite uh, Gino Kuznetsov's um, attempt to halt progress. But Michael Sykes in the five car almost into the back of Kakinen. Roderick now char making a charge in car number four. As now we have um, Taub has closed up onto the back of Adrian Devereaux. He's now going to make a run on him coming into one. Devereaux trying to hold him off. Not quite. Taub slides it backwards. Slides it around, but he's going to be able to take the spot. And he shuts the door on Adrian Devereaux. So he doesn't get a good run on him coming on to, coming, coming on to the long straightaway. Uh, that, which will eventually leads into turn five. And here the, here's uh, Leonid Roderick and Michael Sykes approaching turn five. Roderick doesn't peek out, I think, trying to wig Michael Sykes out a little bit, but uh, uh, now he's going to make him a room in, uh, No, you're not going to get a pass down at turn six uh, with a run like that. That would have been very, very brave. Oh, Benoit Fuchler is out of the race in car number 48. He'll be back at Indy with the Altalia squad with Giovanni Rota, as I mentioned before, but his run here at Road America is over. He, able, he was actually able to qualify for the Coriala Grand Prix with them, so uh, I'll have to see if he's able to repeat that success at Indy. Uh, very, very disappointing for Fuchler. He's not exactly had the best hand dealt him uh, here this weekend. And now looking at Cameron Taylor, who's running back in 23rd place in the Sierra car. Car number 60. Oh, he slides it off. Braked a little too late, and off he goes. Cameron Taylor pulling behind the tire wall, and looks like he's going to need to get a tow out of there. He's making sandcastles. Friedrich Jaeger in the Vernstrom is in the points. He's up to 20th. Scott Bates in the in the customcards.com. 88 cars running up in 19th. And there's Davenport uh, being useless in the background. Uh, and Yuli Nasova right in front of them. Nasova's not had a very good day either. She's sl slowly going backwards. Jaeger, on the other hand, is having a pretty solid run for himself. Um, this is his last Independence Trophy race. Frank Azur in the 46 car. Uh, the, uh, is being called into the pit lane. This is lap 16. He's the first car to pit. And uh, that's, uh, again, a little bit mind-boggling as to why the team is calling him in so early every, every stop. And uh, everyone else is pitting on lap 17, it looks like. Here's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Kevin Dwyer in. I was looking at some of the other cars in the background. Uh, Melanie Klebno in. DK coming in on lap 17. And there you see, the, there's the Vernstrom with Friedrich Jaeger in. Michael Sykes at car number five. And he, uh, this is lap 17 also, so this is a bit of a replay. He comes into the pit. He came into the pits on lap 17 as well. Packer Carroll in the two. Came in. And uh, everyone else came in on, on lap 17 except the two Gesslers. Devereaux, Savaral, Roderick. And Davina Henton in the 11 car. So Davina Henton is playing a bit of a fuel strategy game. And they all, and the leaders, here they are, all in on lap 18. So they are clearly, they're making their fuel last a little bit. And here's Luciano Savaral coming into the pits. And up, oh, we got another mechan we got another mechanical failure. This time it's the Lycoya of Greg Woodard. Car 41, and he's going out of the race after that first corner collision. Which I don't think really was anyone's fault. And anyways... Here's Melanie Klebno running in 12th place. She's been slowly dropping back. Not quite sure why that's the case, but Klebno is doing her best to hang on to as, as uh, much as she... Oh, no! Pluma smoke coming out of the back. That might be why. That might be why the, uh, Klebno had been dropping back to the field because uh, that, that engine was slowly going south. There's Henton going by. She's had a really, a really rough run with mechanical failures lately. And uh, Davina Henton has been rather lucky on that front because Henton's mechanical problems have all come in practice sessions. And uh, I think Henton is just, uh, is, really has to be feeling lucky right now. But at the same time, they're both driving the same car with the same engine. So Henton might, uh, might be a little worried now that Clevno has dropped out with a mechanical problem. Roderick and Sykes doing battle for fourth. Sykes challenging Roderick. Down into turn five, the red five. Can he take the lead on the outside? They're pretty even in turn in station five. No, not quite. As you see the running order there, 33 of the 41 starters still running. And uh, Sykes 
Just trying to clear Roderick and oh, not clear. Yeah, yes, he's going to be able to do it. Roderick slides it wide and Michael Sykes hangs on. Is, is going to hang on and take fourth from Leonard Roderick who goes back to fifth in car number four. Looking up at the leaders now. Here you see Taub, Devereaux, Kekkonen. As here they run. Uh, Taub hasn't got a win yet this year. Uh, Kevin Dwyer in that pit stop cycle is... Uh, Giving, uh, giving Packer Carl some headaches by getting back in front of him. However, uh, he might have a headache in front of him because there's Chris Davenport. And um, that might not be good long term. But uh, Kevin Dwa Oh, no! We're getting word that the team has just called him into the pit lane because they see that there might be a puncture on that car. Kevin Dwyer is pitting! Oh! Can Kevin Dwyer have one... If he can have one good weekend... That where everything just, uh, where nothing goes wrong, I think he would be a very, very solid points contender because he has had nothing but bad luck this year. Because Nietzsov is out of the race in the eight car because uh, there's his team at Yulina Sova closing in on him. Uh, I think uh, most of the leaders will be thankful that he's going out of the race, frankly. Jacob Eicholtz in the um, 31 car has gotten by Kevin Dwyer after Dwyer left the pits. So, uh, this should tell you where Kevin Dwyer is. He's in round 14th. But that doesn't mean he's backing down. No, he's in full attack mode still. Kevin Dwyer is definitely eager to get back to the front. I don't think he's going to do it. But he's uh, certainly going to try his best to put a show on for the fans. And thankfully he's doing that. Um, Matthias Taub is extending his lead over Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekin and his teammate. Not a whole lot going on up here with the leaders. Let's see what's going on a little bit further back in the field if we can. And, whoa, we've got something going on with Adrian Devereaux and Artuk Kekin in here. So, uh, battle for second is on between the Frenchman and the Finn, who don't normally get along with each other on the racetrack. We have seen a lot of rough driving between the two of them. Uh, balls, but also a lot of good, clean, hard racing. Kekin thought about making a move. Here he comes. Could it be a Gessler 1-2? Devereaux trying to hold him off. Down into the first corner. Adrian Devereaux versus Arto Kakinen. And Devereaux doesn't quite have him cleared. Oh, Arto slides it around. That's going to hamper his run. And coming down now here, Adrian Devereaux trying to hold him off. Oh, Kakinen slides it in. He's got the preferred line here, but not down into Station 5 as they're still side by side here at Road America. You don't need a gimmicky super speedway like Daytona or anything like that to have some side by side racing against two drivers who have a lot, a lot of heart as Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekkonen continue to do battle here. This is great stuff as Arto Kekkonen clears Devereaux finally, but it took him half a lap around this four-mile track to do so. Wow! Davina Henton in the 11 car is up to 10th. Remember, she started all the way back in 29th, and Zach Duff in the, uh, in the second Juno is up to 11th. So Duff flying under the radar along with Zelda Ashby, who's sitting up in ninth place in the 55 car. And Ashby could be an outside contender for the championship in uh, the FPO car. And wouldn't that be amazing? Given that that's, this team is here in its first season with a new car, could, this, could FPO take the championship in their first year? Zelda Ashby is certainly uh, giving them the opportunity to, opportunity to do so as uh, she is closing in, actually, on, on Lewis Kingston and Luciano Savarall. So the, the legend of Zelda Ashby continues, but meanwhile, back at the front, Matthias Taub in car, number t uh, in car number 10 continues to lead. That's Giovanni Rota. He just put a lap down. They, uh, the Power Sting Incorporated brought him into the pit lane, got the whole front end off that car. It now looks like a CRL modified as uh, Taub continues to lead. Not a whole lot going on with in front of him, actually, but we got uh, Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekkonen. Could best battle could resume. And if you may have seen him in the background, Michael Sykes is there. As Kekkonen, no, doesn't quite think about lapping Rhoda at that time. He uh, wanted to make sure Rhoda saw him. And uh, that's obviously one of the most important things about lapping a backmarker is that they see you coming as Luciano makes a move on Lewis Kingston for seventh. In uh, the hottest Walter racing car, the backyard grill machine makes a move around Lewis Kingston. And uh, that's going to be uh, seventh place for Savaral, who is uh, making making a good impression here. He nearly won this race a couple of years ago, uh, but uh, this year just really hasn't gone his way. The Brazilian just had, he almost won twice, but in both instances, he ran into a Volpe and crashed in the last lap. Unsung hero of the race so far, Alessandro Rossini in the number 42 Tutino. 
The Italian, has, uh, his runs this year have caught the attention of Volpe, and there are some rumors that he is the favorite to replace Packer Carroll at, the, at Volpe, assuming that Packer Carroll does not drastically increase his uh, performances, because Rossini has done things with the Tutino that are just absolutely amazing, and uh, one of them is so far his performance in the race. He's running ahead of Quiggles Jr. in the 99 car. He's just having a genuinely fantastic drive in this 42 car. So uh, I think definitely we have to keep some eyes on the Italian. He had a run in the series previously. It didn't go very well. Dropped out of sight for a couple of years, and here he is with Tutino. And uh, all this, despite Packer Carroll, easily Packer Carroll's best drive of the season so far. As you see, pit stop cycle has gotten underway on lap 26. Uh, Packer Carroll is in. Michael Sykes in car number five, you see right here, uh, also pitted on lap, uh, also pitted early. So uh, Sykes pitting a little earlier than the rest of the cars he's racing with. Leonard Roderick is taking advantage of this, and he's going to push real hard and see if he can't get make up some track position on Michael Sykes with a low fuel run. Doesn't exactly work uh, as well in this series as it does in open wheel categories, but we certainly have noticed a lot of uh, fast laps being done on low fuel. We'll have to see how much time Roderick makes up on this lap. He comes in at turn five, comes in a little bit hot. Oh, he throws it off the course and into the tire wall. Oh, Roderick throws it away. Here's another look at it. Entering station five, car number four. This comes in too late. Wiggles it around, uh, wiggles it just a little bit on entry, and then into the tire wall he goes. And he has got to be kicking himself for that because he just threw away a top five run as Matthias Taub is lapping David Krikorian in the 66. This is um, not exactly DK's last start in that car. The team hasn't ruled out entering DK and Sin of Allen Hodges for Indianapolis, so we'll have to see if they actually follow through with that. It would be nice to see DK get one last shot with that team. As Arto Kekkonen in car number nine uh, is about to lap DK. Oh, DK doesn't make his life easy, and Kekkonen bumps him off the course. And oh, look, Adrian Devereaux has now got to run on Arto Kekkonen. Well, gee, how, what a surprise. Uh, man, it's great how stuff like that works. just happens to magically work out like that. Luciano Savarola in car number three is uh, continuing his march towards the front, but he's pitting the three car during this uh, pit stop cycle here. And uh, the leaders are in the pits on lap 28. And as you see, uh, Kakinen has got a little bit of damage in the left front of that car. Is out. Oh, Kurt Pliskin's out. Uh, smoke billing out the back of that car. And that's both of the um, well, both of the main Lycoyas out, and the other one that's uh, the other Lycoya interceptor with Giovanni Rota in trouble. And Nasova's out. So that's both the Katsivs out of the race. Car number seven, Yulia Nasova out. Uh, after what's not really been a pretty good, uh, a very good race for Nisova, so big disappointment there is Jacob Eichel it's in the 31 car. Oh, and we got another off, and everything's just falling apart now, isn't it? We've had a lot of people just dropping out or just spinning off the track. Well, anyways, the two Gesslers with one, two. Tau bleeding Kekkonen with Adrian Devro running in third, but he has to lap Ian Cooper first as uh, they're both entering Canada Corner, turn 12. Cooper making uh, Cooper making Devereaux's life easy in the background. But there goes Matthias Taub and Arto Kekkonen out of the picture. And uh, did Alert Short fill the five car? Because Michael Sykes is leading the race uh, after that cyclist stops. I don't think he can make it to the end of the end of the race on this fuel load. I, surely there's no way he could be doing that. And uh, uh, they have to be they have to have had some kind of issue. But it looks like they actually did try short filling him and are going to try to run him to the end of the race. And uh, they might just be watching their fuel consumption numbers after these first couple laps. And uh, with, the, with the red five coming off the final corner and out of the main straight on. What, wait a minute. Why are they pitting him? Okay, if you're going to make a. If we're going to roll the dice on strategy, don't bail it after two laps. Because we saw what Kevin Dwyer was able to do holding off Matthias Taub for as long as he did. I, I don't understand that at all, especially when Michael Sykes could have actually held pace with Arto Kakinen. Anyways, uh, I don't think that I don't think there was another problem with that car, but maybe there was. Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car. Speaking of him, is a little further back, but um, here are the two leaders, uh, Matthias Taub and Arto Kakinen, and uh, they they're closing in now on uh, Friedrich Jaeger in the uh, Vernstrom car. 
Lewis Kingston in the 17 car and Zelda Ashby in the 55 also pinning against. It looks like they figured out that they can't make it to the end on fuel. Zach Duff did as well. Gasper, it looks like a lot of people are pitting. Looks like a lot of people miscalculated fuel mileage. Which means, are the leaders really going to stretch it to the end of the race? Kevin Dwyer, remember, pitted for a puncture. He's, he's staying out. With a lot of people he was on cycle with are in the pits, but he's still out there. DK throws it off from 21st. So, the Californian's day goes from bad to worse and from worse to terrible in a hurry. Arjo Kekkonen is uh, pulling away from Adrian Devereaux, but he's also lost Matthias Taub a little bit, as you can see in the background, as Devereaux goes around Martinez, as uh, he is really beginning to hunt, trying to hustle that car and put uh, mount the challenge to Kekkonen and hopefully steal second place away from him. Kakinen and Devereaux are both in the hunt for the title, but so is Matthias Taub, and Devereaux wants to minimize the amount of points that Taub is able to gain on him. Whoa! Friedrich Jaeger sliding that 256 car all over the place. Adrian Devereaux is the defending winner of the round of Indianapolis, and certainly he wants to enter that race with a fair bit of momentum. Looking at Arto Kakinen, we're on lap 32 of uh, this 36 lap race. Kakinen in this nine car. He's had a very, very good run today. That's uh, what he needed, especially... Oh! Oh, he's slowing! Arto Kekkonen is pulling it off! He's slowing! Kekkonen in trouble! The Finn is in big trouble here! He has definitely got a problem, and it doesn't look like it's a good one. Kekkonen out of the race, it looks like. He's letting Devereaux go by. He's going very, very slowly out on track. I don't think there's any way that Kekkonen's going to recover from this, and he, the Finn is out of the race. With just a handful of laps to go, as we see former teammates Kingston and Ashby battle for position just outside the top 10, just inside rather. Alessandro Rossini is holding on to 12th place, Tutino's best ever finish, 11th at Japan in 2011. He, is, uh, having, he uh, could possibly get Tutino's first uh, top 10 finish if any, uh, many more cars in front of him drop out. So, Frank Azure is... Uh, in the uh, 46 car is back running in 16th as you see him leaving the pits here and uh, Frank as you're having a pretty solid day again the only thing that's gone wrong for the FAC Motorsports car really is the pit strategy on pace Azure is doing a very good a very very solid job today however I think he, it's not quite enough to really make a serious challenge for the Independence Trophy but he's certainly gonna give it the best shot he has and maybe finish in the top five in that uh, in that battle Here's two of his competitors for the Independence Trophy. Friedrich Jaeger, who's in his last race in the Independence Trophy, and Jose Luis Martinez. Jaeger really wants 17th from Martinez. He's giving it everything he's got. Jaeger on the inside of the Mexican. No, oh, doesn't quite have him cleared. Martinez gives him the space. But uh, this is a great drive from Martinez and from Jaeger. Um, Martinez holds him off. Jaeger trying to close in, and oh, Jaeger's around! Oh, and he's off, and he's into the tires. And that's a big disappointment for Jaeger, who had a very, very good run. Binned in at the worst possible time. Here on the white flag lap, Matthias Taub has got a pretty solid lead over Adrian Devereaux. But we have a roadblock here with Marty Stoidler and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., the pole sitter. What an awful, absolutely horrible day, Quiggles Jr. Oh, Quiggles really loose up in the kink. Saved it. But look at Adrian Devereaux now. Devereaux is closing. And Taub really doesn't want two lap cars in front of him. He's got only a couple of corners to go. And a very aggressive Adrian Devereaux now. Is he is he saying? No! Devereaux is really, really closing in now. Marty Soiler gets away, but Quiggles Jr. is going to affect the outcome of this race. As now, Taub slides it wide, but not quite. Devereaux doesn't quite clear Quiggles Jr. enough. Qu uh, quickly enough. Taub slides it wide, though, in the last corner. Adrian Devereaux has got a run on him. But it's not going to be enough. Matthias Taub comes up the hill and takes his first win of the season in dramatic fashion. Definitely one of the best races of this season that's already had several instant classic races. Wow. Devereaux finishes less than a half a second behind him. Michael Sykes finishes on the podium despite that what appeared to be a pit lane blunder. Still beats Luciano Savarall. Davina Henton, a strong run. Packer Carroll, and, uh, his best drive of the year by far. Kevin Dwyer and Zach Duff ran out in the top 10. Great drives for them. Leonid Roderick, car number four, takes home the final point, finishing back in 20th place. A very, very gritty and determined performance 
by the four-time series champion. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship heading into Indianapolis, the second double points event this season. Devereaux is still on top over Matthias Taub and Michael Sykes. So the three men on the podium are in the top three in the championship hunt. Zelda Ashby still there. Davina Henting, who won the last double points race, the Cariola Grand Prix, Arto Kakinen, uh, Leonid Roderick, and Luciano Savarol, and Scott Bates even could have some major gains if they uh, perform very well at Indy. Also looking a bit further back, Lewis Kingston could be a factor there. Kurt Pliskin, of course, probably could have won Cariala had it not been for a very costly mistake early in the going. And Yamino Tenshi is still 18th in the championship. Uh, Cariala was her last start in this series, so Tenshi will be back attempting Cariala with the Clockwork Racing team. And uh, Quiggles Jr. and uh, Davenport uh, rounding up the top 20. Just a side note, we have a very, very interesting Rookie of the Year battle going on between uh, Kuznetsov, Quiggles Jr., and Davenport, and that has actually been very, very close and very, very intense. Uh, that's definitely going to go the whole season. It's definitely going to be the whole season before we uh, have a clear winner in that battle. And another battle we should be keeping tabs on is the Independence Trophy. Remember, no independent points scored at Indy. And despite the, their best attempts, Dan Lechleiter still sits on top of the board with 212 points. Jacob Eicholtz's last run uh, didn't get him enough points. Uh, probably spinning off earlier pro really hurt his chances. Ben Huron, I do believe, still has a run to go at the 43 car. He could be a factor. Friedrich Jaeger is done. Uh, going back a bit further, you got Danny Savin, who could be a factor. And Jose Luis Martinez on 124 points. Uh, remember, that team won the Independence Trophy last year with Gaspar Souza. And uh, I wouldn't put it past them to be a factor again. Martinez still has two races to go. And uh, with the rate he's going, he definitely could be a major th uh, threat to dethrone Dan Lechleiter. Uh, but other than that, I think a Lechleiter might have it a little bit easier than you might think. The next race for the TM Master Cup Series is the round of Indianapolis. It's a special event, double points, and a huge entry list. With the return of Team Star USA and Ocean Motorsports, that should be a very, very interesting race.